Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning. It is the Earth Master back here on this finally Friday, right? Are we in Friday? Yes, we are. May 12th, 2023. It's about 1028 a.m. here uh, along the West Coast where we're still rocking and rolling with some earthquake activity. In fact, uh, in the morning time when I was sleeping, I was rudely waking up by my earthquake early alert system. Uh, that was at about 3 something in the morning for a 5.2 earthquake. Uh, alert came over my phone, uh, said earthquake, um, shaking expected, drop cover roll. And I was in bed, but I heard my phone go off here. Uh, keep it charged next to my uh, the, the, the uh, desk here. And I was just like, oh goodness, I was just out of it. I didn't even get up, so I was just expecting some shaking. Didn't really feel it, but either way, um, there was another uh, moderate aftershock here up in the Lake Almanor area, just outside of Chester, about 3.18 a.m. this morning for a 5.2. And it looks like there was a few folks up around that time in the morning. Had I been up, I guess I would have felt it as well, just outside of Chico here, but I was just out of it. Um, so felt down to us. Uh, looks like Sacramento and even the Bay Area as well. This is from the aftershock, the 5.2. Uh, now we did have the uh, stronger earthquake, 5.5 yesterday. This is all a uh, pretty good sequence of earthquake activity here around the Lake Almanor region. I believe this is just on the uh, uh, Almanor Fault. Uh, I know we've had quite a bit of rainfall, quite a bit of snow. Uh, now we're getting some snow melt obviously up in the mountains with the warmer temperatures. Uh, contributing to some uh, weight balance out here, right? So some of these fault systems uh, apparently are not liking the extra weight on them. Uh, but either way, we're looking at 53 earthquakes so far um, today. Or well, I should say over the last 24 hours, with the largest being, of course, the 5.5 earthquake from yesterday. So now two five-pointers and um, some threes in there as well. There's always, always a possibility of seeing something much larger taking place here. Uh, I know back in 2013, I think we had a, uh, we had the 5.7. I want to go back a little bit further and see, um, I'll go back over here real quick, see what the largest magnitude is out here. I know we had a good swarm back in the 60s, I think. That's before my time, but still. Uh, I did do some studying on it. I want to just check out the entire earthquake catalog book here and see what we have in the um, just directly in this area of uh, Northern California. So right around the Chester area, that's going to include Lake Almanor, Greenville, this whole area here. So kind of see what we got. All right, so there is the 5.7, which was a little bit further south uh, back in 2013. It looks as though, at least according to the data here, that, um, well, those are the only earthquakes in this area. Um, the one from yesterday and, uh, of course, one last night and then a 5.7 back in 2013. Now, this is just 4.5 and above. Uh, that doesn't cover some swarming activity that happened um, back in the 60s, I believe. So just kind of wanted to see what the larger quakes are up here. And um, looks like about 5.7 back in 2013 is it. 10 years ago to be exact, actually. Uh, but who knows? I mean, really, who knows with all the water... Um, soaking into the ground up here uh activating some faults there's always a potential i guess of uh seeing you know another uh five or so in this area there are numerous fault systems that run up here uh, usgs does not believe this is associated with any volcanic activity there at mount lassen the earthquake activity is just too shallow i believe this firmly in uh, relation to the water out here in the lake albano region um not for sure exactly how full it is, but it is pretty close uh, to being full. And let's see here. Let me back out a little bit. Uh, somewhat close here uh, to the dam. Now this looks like it was uh, a little bit older imagery here. 
Uh, but there is a dam up here in this region. I should say down south here in this area, I believe. I don't know if I've ever actually been here on the south side of this lake. Uh, north side up around Chester, yes. So uh, if anyone does know any info on this area, let me know. Uh, but it does look like it's a few thousand feet away from that area. Um, so I don't think there's any major threat there. But if we get some more uh, larger quakes, you never know. All right, 52 earthquakes, folks. Uh, expect potentially some more aftershocks. The last one so far looks to be a 2.2 in the Canyon Dam area of Lake Almanor region. Double check, make sure everything's good there. Um, I pulled up a seismograph station here in um, Petrolia. Where are you? Right here. That's going to be the closest station to this area for now. Uh, it will pick up the larger events, but not the smaller ones. And Petro uh, Petrolia is located uh, just outside of Eureka, California, to the west over here. <clears throat> All right, let's see what else we have going on here across the west coast. Very quiet across the Pacific Northwest. Uh, one earthquake on the San Andreas Fault, 2.9, 16 kilometers deep, just northwest of Hot Springs, Desert Hot Springs. That's right on the uh, southern branch. Got to watch that. Uh, no major swarming going on around Southern Cal, just a little bit of uh, activity here uh, with a 1.4 coming into the Ocotillo Wells area of California. Uh, a look at the rest of the country here. Uh, Yellowstone area looks like they're having a little bit of activity. Let me see what we have here <clears throat> across the uh, region. Now this activity that you're seeing uh, listed on this map is a 5.5 from yesterday and also the five pointer uh, early this morning at three o'clock. So that picked it up pretty nicely. But notice the difference in the uh, magnitude by the uh, Signature on the graph, quite the difference. Remember, just a couple points of the magnitude can increase the energy substantially. And uh, this was a 5.2, 5.5. There's a little bit of after or uh, microquake activity occurring here in the region of Yellowstone National Park. Nothing big, uh, but it looks like that activity was occurring prior to and after the activity there in Northern California. <clears throat> All right, New Madrid seismic zone over here. Got uh, looks like two earthquakes coming in, one from yesterday and one from early this morning, a 2.2 in the New Madrid seismic zone, also over here along the eastern portion of the country. 2.1 around the North Carolina area. All right, uh, looking at the Big Island of Hawaii, most of the activity around Pahala and, of course, the Kilauea volcano area, still seeing some swarming. Uh, no major changes to note. Uh, we've got just got a notification of 4.2 in Peru. There it is down here in South America. Looking pretty active here today with uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity stretching up and down uh, roughly about the Costa Rica area down south into the Peru Chile Trench. We're seeing a pretty good swarm here it looks like uh, off the coast here of Costa Rica with a whole bunch of threes. Uh, and um, another 3.3 coming in right now uh, in that area. So we'll watch uh, definitely watch this region for some potentially larger movement uh, with this uptick in activity. <clears throat> All right, uh, the rest of the world here. See what we got going on here across the area. Um, a couple earthquakes so far. It looks like uh, Mariana Islands area around Guam. Seen a 5.1 earlier. Um, a couple hours ago, pretty shallow at about 47 kilometers deep. Also some movement back building here into the Tonga Trench area. A little surface earthquake activity with a 4.8. Uh, another deeper movement quake here, midnight. Uh, 500 kilometer deep, 4.3 into the uh, Tonga Trench. Uh, a little light activity here across the Mediterranean, Turkey and even areas of eastern Afghanistan. I don't think we're seeing anything major going on there today. Uh, look at the globe in this region. Um, shows just generally light earthquake activity and some aftershock sequences there in Turkey. Aside from that, uh, for the most part, fairly minimal. 
Atlantic Ocean, 4.6 down here, way south into the South Sandwich Trench. Uh, that's an older movement quake there, it looks like, from last night. Uh, but I think the big picture right now is what's happening out here uh, along the west coast, the eastern Pacific plate here, portion of it, and the adjacent plates, um, which includes the Nazca, the Cocos plate, aligned with the South America region and the Peru-Chile Trench. That's a pretty good uptick in earthquake activity out here. So continue to keep that in mind. Uh, again, California. We'll keep an eye out for some swarms down here south. Right now, there's not a whole lot, but uh, we'll definitely keep our eyes open for that. And expect more aftershocks up here, folks. I think that's uh, going to be continuing for a little bit. If you don't have the early alert uh, earthquake warning system and you live in the California area, you can find it pretty easily on any of your uh, <coughs> mobile device app stores. Um, it'll wake you up, trust me. I had everything on silent uh, as I do normally at night and it still came through blaring loud and uh, woke me and Missy Mimi's up. Alright, uh, let's see. Which is good, right? Because if it's a bigger earthquake, you want to be prepared. <clears throat> all right puerto rico area uh looks like uh, 3.8 uh, early this morning about six o'clock or so no major adjustment uh, elsewhere that i can see one earthquake way up in the northwest territories canada being reported by the usgs at 3.3 the kinsey mountain area looks like all right uh, space weather activity we'll move on here and uh, see what we have Yeah, that uh, solar storm we were expecting, it looks like, um, well, it kind of looks like we're getting a little bit of elevated conditions right now on the KP index board up around the five level, which would be a G1 class storm. Um, let's see what we got here for the real time solar wind. Looks fairly stable though, according to the uh, According to this data here, so not for sure where that's coming from. Not really seeing a major enhancement here on the auroras, but we were expecting a, uh, a G3 class storm, which uh, subsequently missed us completely. Uh, although it looks like it may be getting a little bit of uh, activity coming in here. We'll watch that though. But I don't think anything major is going to happen. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Uh, Flare activity. What's going on with the flares? Still elevated potential here, it looks like. 20% uh, chance for an X flare. Let's see what we got going on here uh, this morning. Most of the very active regions are now stretching across and away from Earth uh, out there on the western limb of the sun. And over here, uh, getting close to center disk, is a couple regional sunspots. They don't really pose any drastic flare threat just by looking at that magnetic structure on that image um, so maybe just maybe a chance for a C flare or a low grade M flare from this region uh, but most of the activity is going to be stretching out there and away from us on the western limb uh, let's see here what did Kevin state uh, arriving later than expected the CME from the long duration M4.2 uh, reach the Discover spacecraft. Well, this was kind of put out earlier. <clears throat> Looks like barely, barely any notification, any noticeable uptick at all on the uh, incoming CME. It doesn't look like it kicked up anything drastically. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, let's go to weather here real quick. Today's weather threat, most of it up into Nebraska, it looks like. Uh, portions of Iowa as well, uh, with a tornado potential in the 5% range. Wind and hail events as well. Looks like the main threat is going to be some large hail up into eastern Nebraska, portions of Iowa as well. So. Just a heads up if you're out there.
be prepared for the weather tomorrow. Uh, looks like a little bit minimal activity, a lot less severe weather potential, but still some moisture out here uh, across portions of Texas and of course up in the uh, Iowa area. It's good news, right? Definitely need some rainfall out there. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Got a pretty busy day. It's supposed to be, uh, ooh, what is it going to be here today? Oh, yay, 94 degrees. <laughs> 94, so I'm going to get out there before it gets too hot here and do a little bit of uh, weed eating. I got some bull thistle plants that are literally eight feet tall from the crazy winter uh, the combination of some sun and warm temperatures and a thunderstorm that developed right over my place when I was gone uh, over the last week or last 10 days or so when I was out in Texas. So didn't get a chance to cut them down, but uh, I'm going to get out there now. I had to put a, a brush cutter on my weed whacker so that I can get uh, in there because these are some big weeds. Both thistle plants are pretty... They're pretty scary looking to them, although they do have a little purple flower that pops up on the head. Looks pretty neat, but uh, they're, man, they're tough to deal with unless you get them early. So I'm going to be busy all day, folks, but I will be checking here on the earthquake activity throughout the day. And also here in three days, we do have our member drawing coming up again. Something we do every month to our members only. Um, we give away some prizes either a $50 Visa MasterCard of your choice uh, or a Earthmaster t-shirt or a geology mining kit. Uh, one of the three there if you choose one. T-shirts right now are kind of on back build um, but I do have the winner from last month uh, shirt being sent out today so that is coming if you are in the chat room. Either way, get in on the member drawing uh, by becoming a member today. You don't have to be the most advanced one. In fact, all of our members uh, are entered into our monthly drawing. All right, folks, have a good day. Stay safe out there. We will catch you guys back out here a little bit later.